Well, a group considered to be terrorist is now moving on up and off America's terrorist list. The Iranian opposition group known as MEK was named a terrorist group 15 years ago for its role in assassinating U.S. citizens. But MEK has apparently found some friends in Washington. Former government officials have been advocating to get the group delisted from the terrorist list. There's been a PR push also to delist MEK. Here's a look at one of the ads. MEK is Iran's democratic opposition, working for a nuclear-free Iran founded on human rights. Unjustly listed a terrorist group, MEK is the victim of violence by the radical regime in Iran and their Iraqi allies. Europe has delisted MEK. And in 2010, a U.S. court ordered a review. Iranians, U.S. lawmakers, and former senior officials demand delisting. Secretary Clinton, for democracy and freedom in Iran, delist MEK. Now, this move could further strain U.S.-Iran relations. So what's behind all of this? Jamal Abdi, the policy director for the National Iranian American Council, joins us now. Welcome, Jamal. Thanks. So I uh, first want to talk about this group. Who is the MEK? The MEK is a, well, I'll, I'll tell you what the State Department and organizations like RAND have said. Uh, they're a cult. Uh, they're a terrorist organization. They were formerly based in Iran and helped uh, topple the Shah through the use of, uh, through the use of violence and terrorism. Uh, they had a falling out with the clerical regime in Iran and sought refuge under Saddam and actually fought under Saddam Hussein against Iran uh, in the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, since then, once the U.S. went in and, uh, you know, toppled Saddam, they've been uh, in a, a camp, Camp Ashraf, and have been fighting to basically get taken off of the terrorist list. They're committed to toppling the government in Iran so that they can install their own leadership and sort of live out the dream that they had in 1979 of ruling over Iran. So now they are no longer terrorists in the eyes of the United States, or that's what the push is. So who exactly is behind this push to delist the group? Well, here's the funny thing. They're not necessarily considered uh, to have given up their terrorist activities. Uh, U.S. officials have actually gone off the record uh, and, and said that the MEK was behind some of the, uh, the assassinations of Iranian scientists uh, and, and professors uh, that have occurred in recent years. Uh, so if the MEK was behind, you know, putting these bombs on cars and delivering bombs via motorcycles, it sounds like terrorism. Uh, and there's an acknowledgment that that's the case. But they, uh, you know, U.S. officials have also said they're working with Mossad. They're working with Israel to uh, engage in this campaign. And so among hardliners here in the U.S., there's a view of they're the enemy of our enemy, so they're our friends. They're working with the Israelis. There's even evidence that they may have been working with uh, U.S. Joint Special Operations uh, Forces in, uh, to be trained in Nevada a few years ago. Um, so there's a lot of question marks about you know, how are, they, how are they being trained and who is funding their activities? And it does point to some, uh, you know, actors that you wouldn't necessarily suspect. Um, any idea who those actors are? Well, as I mentioned, you know, the link to Mossad, the link to, you know, when the U.S. went into Iraq in 2003, uh, Donald Rumsfeld actually intervened uh, because they were considered, you know, enemy, enemy combatants. And he actually intervened because there was a view that they might be useful uh, at a future date to use against Iran, to actually use terrorism against Iran. You also have domestically here, here in the U.S., you have members of Congress who are accepting campaign donations from supporters of the MEK. Uh, you have very prominent U.S. Uh, former officials uh, like Rudy Giuliani, for instance, who have spoken out in favor of them and have received really exorbitant fees for their support. Uh, so you have this huge money network that is funding these activities. And at the end of the day, it really is hardliners, um, you know, whether it's in the U.S. or possibly in Israel, possibly even some of the Gulf states that are supporting these guys as a cudgel against Iran. Now, you were saying that um, this group was, has been supporting financially U.S. officials, but if they're a terrorist group, how are they able to, if something doesn't add up here, it doesn't seem that officials are supposed to be taking money or, or even communicating or working with a group that's considered to be terrorists. Well, that's sort of the whole point of having a terrorist list, so that these organizations, for instance, you don't have Al Qaeda running around the U.S. Uh, paying for fundraisers uh, of officials. The fact is, you know, there's been a blind eye turned towards them, uh, and now finally that this activity is becoming a little bit more front and center. There have been subpoenas issued for some of these officials who are endorsing them. There haven't been any subpoenas issued for members of Congress, for instance, who have 
hosted the MEK uh, on congressional grounds, have hosted uh, celebrations for the group uh, in committee rooms on the House side. That hasn't yet happened. And really, it's a matter of they have a very extensive web of financing, not just in the U.S., but in Europe. They use some uh, like front charities, uh, both in, the Europe, in Europe and the U.S., to uh, funnel this money through. And what they claim is, look, we are just uh, concerned Iranian uh, exiles who want to support this group. The fact is, Iranians don't support the group. Um, and they're operating some very shady sort of networks here in order to finance their activities. Now, Jamal, how is Tehran viewing this move? How could this affect the U.S.'s relationship with Iran, uh, a relationship that is already shaky? Well, I think given that you have uh, negotiations uh, that are ongoing with Iran right now, that this is actually potentially dangerous. Uh, uh, it's, it's a dangerous signal to Iran that the U.S. may be willing to use a terrorist group against Iran. Uh, it sort of poisons the well for these, uh, these negotiations that are supposed to be occurring in good faith. And it really says to Iran, um, you know, how can the United States and its allies credibly uh, urge Iran to not support terrorist groups uh, when it appears that we may be opening the door to openly supporting terrorist groups against Iran. And Iran sees this as another example of the U.S. possibly or ultimately pushing for regime change. Um, is that the case and why? I think that uh, the, the supporters of the MEK and the MEK itself actually, that's, that's, that's their stated goal. Um, which is really unfortunate because this is not a democratic organization. They function as a cult. They don't have democratic values. Um, as far as the administration's view, I think what this really is is a, a deal that they're making with the MEK in order to facilitate the safe transfer of MEK members out of this camp in Iraq to a different location because the Iraqis don't want them there. And the MEK has actually threatened to commit mass suicide if they don't get their way. Uh, so the U.S. is looking at this as this potential, uh, you, know, you know, mass atrocity committed by whether it's the MEK or if the Iraqis go in there, and they've said, okay, look, we'll make a deal. MEK, if you leave this camp voluntarily, we'll take you off the terrorist list. Now, I do want to take uh, another look at the administration's stance on this and why they potentially would want to delist this group. Um, apparently, I mean, I'm seeing reports that this group has agreed to renounce terrorism and kind of change its ways. And if that's the case, if a group is changing its ideology and now agreeing to help the U.S., um, you know, foreign policy can sometimes evolve. And does it make sense for the U.S. then? to change their approach in foreign policy if this group has agreed to renounce terrorism? You know, if they have credibly renounced terrorism, then absolutely. There should be a way for this group to get off the list. They should not, uh, they should not be there indefinitely. It should not be uh, a political tool. That being said, they have made this claim several times. They've made this claim uh, at least two or three times in the past decade. And then there's always some incident that happens that exposes the fact that in, you know, they're, they're still using violence to advance their goals. So if there can be a credible assurance, if the MEK, for instance, if they actually issue something to their members that says we're no longer going to use violence to advance our goals, that would be a good first step. Uh, there are a number of steps they can take to actually make this a credible offer instead of what it really is, which is just PR. Mm. Very interesting, Jamal. Thanks for coming on the show. Pleasure as always. That was Jamal Abdi, Policy Director for the National Iranian American Council.